Bill Ruger had a great sense of what American shooters were looking for. And one of those guns was an American-made over-under. He called it the Ruger Red Label. Well, John Browning with the superposed proved uh, just after the uh, conclusion, essentially, of the Depression, that Americans had an interest in a stack barrel gun. The stack barrel gun provided some advantages. You had one sighting plane. Uh, you had vertical alignment, uh, i.e. A, a centralized point of recoil along the axis of the gun. There were, there were reasons for a, for a stack barrel gun. There were reasons to like the over-under, especially for trap and, and skeet shooters. So Americans wanted an over-under, uh, and the superposed was a beautiful gun, but it was an expensive gun for the average guy to buy in 1931. So in 1977, Ruger, uh, probably then at the height of its work in investment casting, parts for firearms uh, decided to enter the over-under market with a gun called the Red Label. When it came to firearms design, manufacture, and sales, there was little that escaped Bill Ruger's eye. He, he was really involved and interested and curious about every facet of the firearms industry. And in the uh, 1970s, he thought, as, as most folks would have, if they were to step back and take an assessment of the American gun market, to get into the upper echelon of sporting clays, traps, skeet, there seemed to be a real need for a, uh, a, a wonderful over and under that wasn't priced to European standards. Bill Ruger wanted an everyman's bird gun. And he really did succeed with the 20 gauge. We reviewed the first one here in August of 1978. And we liked the gun quite a lot, as a matter of fact, declaring it uh, safer than most over-unders that had rebounding hammers. Uh, the odds of a, a double happening uh, were mechanically impossible. It had some, some nice features. Uh, the safety and barrel selector were mounted on the tang, very easy to operate and manipulate. But it was the lines of the gun that I think that appealed to Bill Ruger. It looked very much uh, so, sort of like a, the, the English boss, the prototypical uh, over-under in, in its lines. And those 20 gauge guns, if you get a chance to shoot them, they, they shoot very well. Uh, they pattern very well in our early tests. And the gun was priced affordably at that time for $480. In 1982, Ruger brought out the 12 gauge version of the gun. Uh, and the 12 gauge, of course, was the most popular because of the most popular chambering. But when they went from the 20 to 12, I, I think they lost something. I, I, I was of the opinion that on the 12 gauge Rugers anyway, there's two kinds of people, people that they fit and people that they don't. And I was one of those who the Ruger Red Label just simply did not point where I looked. Initially, the guns were uh, investment cast uh, blued receivers uh, and then uh, blued barrels. But then Bill Ruger started to do some things differently. One of the most interesting was the Ruger Woodside introduced in 1995. And this is a gun where instead of just having the buttstock end at the back of the receiver, they would actually inlet wood all the way up where side plates would be on another gun. And it was actually a very, very beautiful gun and frankly, pretty hard to make. And Ruger did a fine job of getting the wood and metal uh, to, to come together on the wood side. Really a gun that no one else has done in the United States. In 1999, Ruger did something uh, that again, hadn't been done in an over under shotgun. And that is to make the all weather. Uh, he made the gun out of stainless steel. So here you have a gun that's intended perhaps for duck hunting, uh, made out of stainless steel. Well, if I were a duck, I would look down and, and look at a guy with a Ruger all-weather and think that he's got a signal mirror. And there's no way I'm coming in there because the, the, the gun was very reflective and bright. Uh, it, was, it was a good idea uh, in terms of weather resistance, uh, but I think a bad idea for duck hunters. The over-under proved to be a concept that was just uh, a little too elusive even for Ruger. By the time we hit 2010, 
Now this is uh, 30 plus years after the introduction of the gun, the red label has climbed into the category of a fairly expensive gun. And while I think Ruger, through the course of production of that gun, proved its point that a gun of that type could be made with modern technology and could be made without a lot of hand work and hand fitting, the simple truth of the matter was that, in fact, it still had become, over time, a very expensive gun. So once Ruger decided to uh, uh, stop production of the red label and then later had a, a gold label side by side, uh, it found in the end that both guns were just simply pricing themselves out of the marketplace for the, for the average guy who wanted a, a double barrel shotgun. The Ruger Red Label had uh, a few characteristics that some found to be less than enjoyable when shooting. They said that the gun uh, was a little bit heavy, uh, center of gravity a little bit high on the gun, making it a little bit harder to, uh, to swing and point naturally. And so in 2013, after some banner years financially, the new Ruger Red Label, after having been off the market for a few years, was brought back in 2013 in, uh, in 12 gauge. And the, uh, the chokes were a little bit different from the originals. And uh, the gun found uh, some, some great favor. I personally have one and, and enjoy it tremendously. Uh, but eventually it also has lapsed into the, uh, the history book for the current uh, time.